here in the studio with Love and the Outcome on the Made It in Music podcast. We've got Jody and Chris. Thanks so much for being on the show. I love it. We've you, written Seth. and recorded vocals in this room and now we're podcasting. Yes. This is awesome. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when you come over here. You may, <laughs> you may be asked to sing something. You may be asked to uh, tell a story. And we may be asking you if our baby can just lay in the middle of the floor on, during the a, session. That a, may or may not booth, have happened. The vocal <laughs> booth makes a perfect makeshift nursery. It oh does. Oh my goodness. How many naps did Ziggy have for like <laughs> two hours while we wrote songs? Yes. I love it though. Being being a dad myself, I'm like, bring the kid, the more the merrier. <laughs> the, the, uh, our co-producer X, who is not, uh, he he's a kid person, but he doesn't have kids yet. So he's yes. probably like... What are they doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> they moved the cords to exact. put the bassinet in the middle. Yeah. Sorry, X. Sorry, you, X. You switching, switching all the pedals on the floor <laughs> yes. while you're doing Ziggy's guitar takes. like, I'm nine months old, but I know how to work a guitar pedal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I want to go all the way back. So what was the first moment that music connected with you guys and you knew that it was just in your blood? It was something that you had to do. Our stories are so different. You start. I want you to talk about the wooden makeshift guitar your dad made to you. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, uh, I grew up in the age of Striper and Guns N' Roses, so air guitar was, you know, very high on my list. Um, but I think my first, like, musical awakening was U2, Joshua Tree, Rattle and Hum era. Um, I think that was sort of the first time that I, you know, took ownership, internalized, whatever you want to call it. This is my music. This is what, this is what I really love. It's not just someone else being like, this is great. You should listen to this. Cause we all do. <laughs> um, and so, and then through that, picking up a guitar, learning how to play their songs, watching the videos and, you know, and then that kind of, I went to, uh, a church where my dad was very into the music program. So we, I was part of that for a long time. And then, yeah. That's awesome. Why don't you tell your story? <laughs> Mine was just so different. I mean, I remember the moment it crystallized for me. I was probably eight or nine. And I remember sort of like that feeling where you're in touch with something bigger than yourself. Mm. And like the hairs on my arms stood up. And it was just this sense of that didn't come from me. And um, I think I was maybe made to do this. And I couldn't have said it that way, but I really did feel like that feeling I just had, I want that forever. Mm. I don't want to grow out of that. And um, I feel like that every time I'm on stage. Honestly, it's never faded for me. Um, I've just kind of kept chasing it down, like feeling free as a bird, feeling understood, um, feeling valued. Um, so that's a that's a tightrope walk, not getting all my value from that and my identity yeah. from that, but yeah. at the same time knowing that's a part of me. Yeah. And so it was less about a band, more about a feeling um, mm -hmm. of being in touch with something that I wanted to do forever. So nine years old and <laughs> yeah. Wh wh what did you guys both do with that feeling? Like, did you go out and start a band right away when you were 10 and like become <laughs> the next big Canadian sensation or what, what was the, the path that sort of led to where you are now? Oh, hmm. uh, lots Career of woodshedding at first, just, you know, in the basement, learning as much, playing along to as much music that I loved. I never really took lessons. I'd taken piano lessons, but guitar and bass, I just kind of figured it out. Chris, what you have, it cannot be taught. That's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if you want to go inside this head. <laughs> well, I think that's the beauty of a band, I think sometimes, because we're a married couple, for people that don't know, um, this chemistry is real. And, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's it, it's a beautiful thing, but it, it's a tricky thing, too, because you have to have your ego in check because we're so different. I mean, this is not a marriage podcast, but, you know, unity is not uniformity, and that's definitely true for us. Mm. We are so different in our musical tastes and just the people that we are. And so when we became a band together and we brought you two meets Amy Grant, it was like, okay, like, what does this sound like? Mm. You know, if it was just your band, which you had, it was British rock and roll. Nice. And it was just my solo project. It was, I wanted to be Alicia Keys. I even like dyed my hair black and wow. it was not effective. But, <laughs> you know, there already was an Alicia Keys. She does that very well. So when we became Love and the Outcome together, it was a becoming and it still is. Mm. 
mm. um, trying to give space for the other person to bring who they are to the table. And yeah, right. we're, and I, I we're still learning. I can't use my metal zone pedal on every single song. Not every song. <laughs> <laughs> Just on just on seventy five percent. Yeah. <laughs> so long way around to answer your question. We both tried to do our own thing. You know, I I said yes. Say yes. <laughs> just say yes to everything that comes your way. That's really what I did. The first time I found myself in a studio, it was literally fake it till you make it. I was in high school. I was hired to sing a jingle um, to sell. Um, furniture. It was a Winnipeg. I'm from Canada. It was a Winnipeg based furniture company. And I had to sing, You're at home with Dufresne. And with who? With Dufresne. 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 Okay. Yeah, I buy yes. that sofa. I, I just bought it. <laughs> so well, good. guys, see you chasing down the dream. <laughs> One $50 paycheck at a time. And um, so I just started saying yes and just trying my best to own my zone and just be like, I got this. I can do this. But I was so scared. And I don't think they knew that was my first time in studio, but someone heard me. Um, so that studio hired me for jingle work. And I was in high school making money off of doing jingles. So I got good at backup vocals, got hired by a band who toured Canada, which is how I met Chris. Just saying yes and following your passion with your feet, like not just following it from your couch, but putting feet to your faith and going, I believe in this. Mm. That's kind of how we ended up here. Mm -hmm. With a lot of wrong turns. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love it though. And, and this is really fun for me because for, for our audience who doesn't know that, we, we've been able to work on a lot of music together. Yeah. And I remember I used to have a little townhome in East Nashville mm -hmm. where it was like the first place that I owned. And I had a little yeah, studio up in the right. bedroom and me and my wife lived there and this awesome little Canadian couple comes over. And I don't remember, you guys <laughs> weren't even crazy. called Love and the Outcome then. I don't remember I think it was Love Struck. Love Struck, that's right. right. We were trying to yep. find a name. It Love took struck. a minute. Yeah. Yes. Which is, I still like that band name. Me too. <laughs> but um, anyway, you guys came over and I just remember there being something like different. And so I, I've just mm. always been a fan since that day one. So it's mm. been really fun to watch. Likewise. That well, it's very mutual. Well, it's, yeah. it's awesome you say that, but it, it, it's been so fun to watch the rise of love and the outcome mm. to the point of what you're doing now. And, and what's even more inspiring is seeing you guys really take your destiny into your own hands, so to speak. Mm. You guys have never relied on other people to do the hard work for you. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if there were transitions at the, your record label, which there have been, yeah, you guys didn't let that, you know, set you back a year and, yeah. you know, just sit around waiting for somebody right. to do something about it. If, yeah. if, if you didn't have shows on the calendar, you would get on the phone and book your own tours. <laughs> yes. And I think if there's a thesis for this conversation today that I want people to take away from it, that that's it. It's mm. just like owning your own career, owning yeah. your own platform. Yeah. So maybe you can dive into a little bit of that side of things because sure you guys are obviously very you yeah. know savvy when it comes to those kind of things but i'm sure it wasn't always the case no um you know what i think it really comes down to the why why do you do what you do and if you're really in touch with not just your gifts and stuff but why you want to do what you do because anyone can sing a jingle and that was cool but that wasn't the end for me that was just the beginning and I think when I got in touch with why I wanted to do what I wanted to do then no one could stop me from it just in kind of a sense of my calling and my purpose and so yeah I mean when you're from Canada and you're a touring musician you've chosen the hard road mm. and I think sometimes you can't have joy without pain mm. they just go hand in hand and we've had a lot of painful growth Spurts where I had to ask my dad to book my shows. I would literally research. Chris would give me the routing. I'd research the places we were going to play. I'd give it to my dad, who was an entrepreneur and had, gave me his Fridays, and he would book my shows. Which is awesome. I didn't know that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, Bernie. He even came up with like a booking name, and we made business cards. And it was like <laughs> they did not know it was my dad calling. But who can sell you better than than your dad? That Nobody. Is so good. It was hilarious. I'm taking notes Master. right now because I have a daughter who's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying that she doesn't want to go into music, but in some ways, yeah. she probably is. So. <laughs> You've given her an open door. So, but yeah, my dad, it was like nine out of 10 bookings he got for me on the page wow. of like, could you try for this dad? Well, and he he would get like the high money gigs too. Yeah. Oh, he, he thought I was worth so much more than I thought <laughs> yeah, I was worth. Like, like it was nuts. Go play a show and we're like, how did, wow, this is amazing. That's like, awesome. He helped me value what I do. Yeah. And, and I just, I couldn't sell myself in the beginning. And now there's times, you know, like when you're in between seasons um, of singles and putting out music, like you said, transitions and labels being bought and sold and things. 
those are the uncontrollables. So just we can't waste too much time worrying about stuff we can't control. Mm. But it's what can you control? Okay, well, I run my own socials. And when I go live on Instagram, people are always asking me to come play. Maybe instead of going, yeah, fun, cool. It's like, where, where do you live? What church do you go to? If you put me in church with your pastor, I'd love to have that conversation. Wow. That's what I do. That, <laughs> and, was, that was last summer. And that was my dad teaching me just that when you're loving people and you're respecting people, it's not a pitch. And when you know what you're worth, it's not a pitch. And when you know what you're called to do, it's giving value to someone else and vice versa. Yeah. So in everything we do, we try and do it that way. You know, I don't just post on Instagram to get followers. I'm doing it hopefully to add value to someone's life and share part of my heart. And I think when it's done from an authentic place, whether you're booking a show, whether you're navigating nobody else believing in you when your label has been bought, you do it with authenticity and just go, here's my story. You know, if this is a good fit, let's do it together. Mm. So good. So you guys did record one. We got to be a part of that w- with y'all and had a, had a blast producing it with you. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, and then second record and then lots of transition has, has happened for people who are unaware mm-hmm. at, at your label. So mm-hmm. really it's been like, how long has it been since, since <laughs> the last record came out as, as the time of recording this? I think the God I know came out in the spring of 2016. Wow. So, and that Way was, that was so the last, so, so another, another years. single yeah. came out after that, but that was the last one that really people would yeah. remember. The other one came out, I think the week the entire radio team was fired. So came out is a right. general term. It's a general term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loose term. <laughs> yeah. But what I love though is, is, is even without having any music released last year, you, yeah. you're like, okay, well, what else can we do? Mm-hmm. How about we go double our Instagram followers? Or how about we yeah. go play a ton of shows, like more <laughs> yeah. shows than most you know, mm-hmm. artists are playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done? Like um, a podcast, like you guys have your own mm-hmm. podcast, which our listeners should totally check out, go to subscribe to their podcast. Yeah. But can you talk about some of those things that you've done Yeah. of like the controllables? What, what have those things sure. been for you guys? Sure. sure. I think, um, well, some of it comes down to like, what's, what's in your hand at this time. And for us, I mean, we had, we had gotten used to touring, kind of as, as more of a group, like with a few other members. And then, uh, when it came time to like, well, let's, let's, what do we have that we can use just the two of us? And Mm -hmm. we have a touring vehicle, we have (laughs) equipment, we have, uh, I used to work for a video editing company. So if we do a podcast, I could probably do the whole thing. Teach a man to fish. All the behind, yeah, yeah, all the behind the scenes stuff myself. So we wouldn't have to necessarily pay someone to do that. And so it just became like this, you know, list of things that we could do. What can we do and what can't we do? Yeah. And mm-hmm. let's do what we can do now. And hopefully as this situation kind of works itself out, because yeah. there wasn't really anything we could do about what was happening with our label. Um, so it was just a lot of prayer and a lot of, <laughs> uh, you know, thinking about what we can do in the meantime. Yeah. Prayer and purpose. It's like praying is awesome. Yeah. And then you kind of need to decide what steps do I take so that God can take over if that's what you believe happens, you know? Mm. Um, and for us too, I think just a realization that when you're in cycle, there's a different set of responsibilities that come with that. Right. So when you really, if you know, if there's artists listening and stuff, when you're in cycle with a new single, you kind of have your marching orders in a lot of ways. You're on the road a lot. It's a busy season. And that was our normal. We'd been in cycle for the first three years we lived in Nashville. We're Canadians that moved and sold everything and ended up in Nashville releasing records and having things just kind of go. And then we found ourselves with this label buyout and kind of, yeah, like you said, just a real dry spell from what we were used to. And I think in those seasons, you can barely survive or you can try and thrive. And we just did what Chris said. We were like, well, at a time where we don't have to be on the road 24 seven, 200 shows a year, uh, we had two babies and found ourselves at home a little more and went, people keep saying, hey, can we keep talking about that? Like we'd share a little bit on stage and I'd get messages. Hey, can you like talk more about that and that and that? And we're like, okay, let's keep talking around our own table and start a podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start like not just creating content. Let's just document our life. Mm -hmm. Let's let people into the the phase that we're in. I think sometimes as artists and creators, you try and just look like you have it all together, but people really want to know the real you. Yeah. And so we just started letting them into that. Mm -hmm. Well, most artists nowadays aren't, 
like they're so focused on the like the music which that's that has to be right the music yeah. has to be right the songs have to be right but yeah then literally everything else is like well i'll leave that to my manager or mm-hmm. my marketing team or yeah or somebody else yeah right but I, I love that you guys have just just owned it so can you talk about um what has the podcast done for you guys sure in terms of creating a real connection with your fans yeah i think sorry just to jump in i think what you described works for maybe the top two to one percent of artists that are out there that it's like i'll just leave that to this person i'll just leave that to this person because you know you literally don't have time to do anything else you're just like being bounced from this meeting to this concert to this interview to whatever but i think for most of us (laughs) that I i think we're kind of maybe more the norm than is what what people generally see as like the rock star absolutely life. Yeah. yeah well and i That's think too cute. i think um hmm. how can i say it vulnerability is this word that gets thrown around a lot and i've really sat with that word to try and figure out what that means for me um because the thing is you can post on instagram and stay home and not play any shows that's not our life. Whatever I post, I'm going to meet someone face to face that's read my post or watched my motivational Monday or listened to my podcast. Right. And I have to be accountable for what I say and do. And so in our life, because we're a married couple and we tour with our kids, our whole, our whole, our song is our life. Our life is our song. It's all connected for us, but that comes back to the why that's just how we do what we do. But I would just encourage anybody listening who's creating and posting that that's not the only part. Hmm. Like it's great to grow your Instagram, that's been an actual focus for us this year because you can't grow everything at one time. But I really wanted to just get under the hood of Instagram and try and figure out how do I do this? How does this tool work for me? Yeah. Not how does it work for everybody else? That's Because hmm. you can look at everyone else's right. feed and go, oh, I should just try that formula. But if that's not your way of communicating, it's never going to work. Yeah. So I just had to give myself time to experiment, which is hard for someone who's an achiever because hmm. I just want to get it right. I want to nail the landing first time and look like I've got it and, you know, just hit the ground running. But you have to let yourself experiment if you want to create new content and go deeper. And so this last year was in this time of touring less. We had to find our voice. And then from that, the Instagram naturally grew. Well, you guys doubled your following in a year that you didn't have any new music released. Yeah. That's amazing. It it kind of we stopped and looked back and hadn't even realized what had really happened. I knew that I couldn't answer all the messages as quickly as I could before. But um, I think what's really exciting now is when we do release new music, it's not just the music driving everything. It's the music is supporting sort of a lifestyle brand Mm. that sort of developed out of that Um, because it's not a marketing plan to just hope for a single at radio. Right. But that's all we had last time around. Yeah. And I think we have a little more now. Hopefully. That's so good. Can you talk about how, may, like maybe some of the things that you learned about just mm-hmm. Instagram specifically, because you spent so much of last year learning yeah. it and owning it? Yeah. I think really finding your voice within the platform is super important. I think until I realized that uh, I had to just let myself be seen in my moment, as messy as it was. I have two kids at home that are really young. So for me in this phase, I can't always be camera ready. It was impossible. And in fact, that ended up being the thing people loved. Just me turning the camera on myself, being comfortable to go, this is me right now. And I mean, we wrote a song about it. The day we wrote um, a song together with Seth, I had spilled my coffee twice before we got to the studio. Which I think is a lyric in the song. It is. is. You're like, put that down. That's great. You know, and I think I had poop or peanut butter. No one could tell on my shirt. And it was just... Yeah, both. Definitely both. And um, That's what you should call your book. <laughs> Poop and peanut butter. Poop or peanut butter. No one else has called a book that. So <laughs> that would be Elaine. Um, but going like in that moment, I, I talked to God like really plain, like how I talked to you. And I was just like, I'm a mess. And I really seriously sensed like, yeah, that's your message. You know, so just those sorts of things, starting to be comfortable with how you talk, how you share, not trying to be perfect. That was my language that I had to get to know. And then everything was an extension of that. And it freed me up to go. I think I'm in a flow now where instead of like creating a little like day in the life, I'm just doing day in the life. I'm just holding up the camera and showing you right now me picking up Ziggy from daycare and being two minutes late because I was just dressed up in the studio and I'm in my yoga pants, like just kind of getting over myself. Well, you've talked about it being not creating content, but just documenting. Yeah, totally. That's the key. 
And that's so good. So um, you've all, I've also heard you say that it's almost like we there, there's a little bit of an overwhelm for people out there mm-hmm. with like, okay, so there's YouTube, there's Instagram. <laughs> yeah. There's obviously I got to get my stuff, my numbers up at Spotify. I've got a yeah. tour. I've got to do all this stuff. All the things. Yeah. But what you guys have done really smart is to just pick one thing at a time yeah. and attack it because you, you, uh, I, I'm going to actually like trade or not trademark, but I credit this quote to you, but whatever yeah. you give yourself to grows. Yeah. So can you talk about that and how that has been a, yeah. a big win for you guys? I mean, I think it's just really true. Like we'll ask ourselves, like, what are we watering this year? Like what seeds are we planting and watering? And you can't do everything at one time. And so just looking at our strengths, what we're both good at, luckily are very different things. So it's a lot of divide and conquer the kids. There's nothing like a daycare deadline to make you productive. Yeah. I mean, that it's funny, <laughs> like in, in one of our songwriting sessions a couple of years ago, we just talked about like how, what we bring to the table into a session. And, you know, I play bass, Jody sings, she can play keys, but it was like, it was, he almost said it, it's those limitations that make it interesting. Like let's, let's mm. lean on those. And yeah. I think in this season, when you have like a four hour window to be productive three days a week, uh, beyond like your shows and all that kind of stuff. It's yeah. like, well, this is, this is when we're kid free. And yeah. You have to be really intentional. Um, and you have to put boundaries in place. And I think I've been working on a book for a good year and a half, mm. but there was a real awareness that podcast comes before book because mm. podcast becomes the platform to launch the book. Mm. So I think it's just a lot of practical thinking through the steps and going, we're two people. This is what the team looks like. This is my manager's strength. This is Chris's strength. This is mine. How do these all play? And then are we all on the same page about what we're growing, what we're watering and building? Um, and so we just had those conversations at the beginning of the year and put them down on paper and revisited them all the time. And once that one goal was met, it opened the door to focus on the next one. Because when something's a habit, even in your worst moment, the habit's built. Mm. So like, I hate working out sometimes. There's days that I'm exhausted and I've carried Ziggy around and he's a weight. They both weigh 25 pounds, Milo and Ziggy. Mm. My two kids, if you can't see me, I'm like showing my muscles because yeah. <laughs> I've built them from carrying these babies around. So I'm too tired to do a workout, but the habit's built. Might not be a 45 minute yoga class, but I can do 15 minutes in my backyard. Yeah. That habit's there to allow me to be free to build other things, but you can't build everything at once. So build good habits so you can move into new zones and, and try new things. I love it. That's so good. So what's your, if you have your, your one big project that you're focused on right now, is it still a podcast? Is it a record or what, what, what is the project right now? Uh, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think new music is probably, um, the biggest focus just because things are starting to, the, the stars are aligning again for, yeah. for that to all come into focus. Um, but I think we're realizing that it can't just be, oh, well, we did a few podcasts now we can let that sit it's like all these things have to you got to keep feeding (laughs) feeding the machine and that's just it like you hadn't been in video for a long time but we spent the year we had off the road so to speak we to be clear off the road is still playing almost every other weekend for us but Mm -hmm. that's a lot different than living in our minibus 24 7 right so we knew that was the year to build the habit of figuring out the podcast so that it could continue on without a ton of energy um, when we were back on the road So you've kind of figured those skills out now. And so when we're going into cycle, that's just feeding the cycle of new music. So that's kind of what I mean, I guess, when we talk about building it. That's sort of built now and it's a habit. And now when new music comes out, all these things are feeding the new music. Yeah. Hopefully. That's the plan. Sure. (laughs) Um, So can you talk about a a little just, we've touched on it a little bit, but yeah, a lot of musicians think that when you sign the record deal, everything Mm -hmm. is just downhill from there and you, you, you do the whole thing but but people don't realize you know record labels get bought and sold and yeah new people come in and out life changes for a and r people and they go elsewhere and just yeah. things happen yeah yeah um how has that affected your maybe view on things or your perspective mm. or like mm. has it not at all like <laughs> it, I, i'm sure there's been moments in the past couple of years that have been no it's it I guess it comes back to the why again. Um, I had a friend say, I'm sharing a new song with record labels, but like, I don't really think I'm like, it's meant for a record label. Like, I'm not, it's like, okay, you got to know if what you're creating is meant for 
mass consumption, or if it's a niche and it's meant for you and your family or you and your church, or if you're a songwriter and the goal is really to get that song in someone else's hand, you kind of need to know the why behind it um, so that your path can be clearly routed around that, Mm. the answer to that question. For us, we had put all our money, all our resources, everything literally into doing this, just the two of us before we signed. Mm. And we hit a ceiling. And so it was like, well, we've never been to Nashville. This seems insane. But I think we need to try if we need to push past where we are now. We were really aware that we couldn't do much more with what we had in that current moment. And so signing was honestly like a logical next step, even though it was beyond our wildest dreams. Mm. Um, So now being in a season where things are a bit quiet and slow, we can still rely on those skills that we've built. That being said, if, if you don't think that you want your music and you don't want to adjust and play by some of the rules you need to play by, Mm. then don't just think a record label is the next right thing if it's just not the next right thing. Yeah, that's good. Well, another another part of really taking your platform and your career into your own hands is just Hmm. understanding and thinking about things like an entrepreneur. Yeah, Like I think it used to be the case when Mm -hmm. there was tons of money in the music business that (laughs) you could hire somebody to do this and you could hire somebody to do catering on the road and you could hire a babysitter and you could hire, like literally all you had to do was show up and sing or whatever. Right. Right. Nowadays, we've you have never to be known that world. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's probably yeah. why you're why you function the way you do now. So, yeah, obviously, understanding finances and like being smart and responsible with that stuff. Yeah, what what does that look like for you guys? Like, does does most of the money at this point come from touring or like mm. is it YouTube? Is it? Yeah, I think that money, that money is still there. It's just it looks like ones and zeros now instead of <laughs> actual dollar bills. Yeah. Um, I'll default to you because I could not even tell you what's in the bank. That is not my area. It's not my area. Are you, are you the guy that, that kind of keeps your eye on that? Uh, you know, to, to say that I know all things financial is, is probably an overstatement, but I, you know, I have a good idea of... You're very organized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would say that from like a percentage point of view, the I think most of our income comes from uh, touring, live shows, Um We've been uh, blessed to write some pretty successful songs. Thank with, you, Seth. With yeah. Seth, <laughs> with you, well, and others, and and yep, others, totally. Um, so we do. We have a bit of mailbox money. Yeah, a bit of mailbox money. We yeah. do see some from that. Um, Comes to an imaginary mailbox. <laughs> yes, there. one of them is in Canada, which we're thankful for, and that one will just keep growing on yeah, its own. For yeah, a while. exactly. That's the kids' college fund. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Um, I think to, to your point, babe, is he's a man of fewer words than me, but they really pack a punch. And in this season of, um, it being a little quieter and feeling like we need to try some new things. Um, Chris just said to me, you know, not everything worth investing in is going to make you money right away. But if you don't invest in those things, like if that's really where your road is leading and what you feel called to do, um, it's less about going, I'm going to invest in this and this and this to make this end. You may not know what it's going to be, but most of the times the thing that your heart is calling you to do, if you stick with it, is mm-hmm. going to eventually make you money. Yeah, Sticking with it, I think, is an answer to all of the questions you've asked That's me. That's the hard part. Yeah. It is. You know, just the longer you can do it, the more consistently you can do it. Don't start so many things that your consistency drops. Yeah. then you shouldn't have started that thing. And I think that's where, where I'm at with YouTube. I know that's we need to crack the code on that. Um, I mean, it's the biggest platform. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy. Um, but I don't want to go there until I know I'm ready to commit to the quality that we want it to be and yeah. the consistency we need it to be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's good. I, I don't know if that was an answer yeah, at that's all. A great, it's a great answer. <laughs> well, I, th- I think for both of us, you know, the thing, the one thing from a musical perspective, I think the thing that's most satisfying is playing a great live show, connecting yeah. with the audience and hopefully building the kingdom through through that. And mm. all these other things serve that purpose. Even if we're only playing one show in the next two months or you're playing 20 shows in the next two months, yeah, all these things in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, I know yeah. that we're going to play that song and I know that that moment is going to connect with the audience. So how can we use all these other mediums to kind of promote that moment. Yeah. Well, I, I love think, that. I think too, on a practical level, um, I don't remember who told us this, but in a songwriting session, they were like, that's a good t-shirt. Mm. And that's a good rule of thumb for a title of a song. Probably that's Seth. a good t-shirt. It probably was you. <laughs> um, and the, the moment that we wrote this song called You Got This, 
was the minute I saw the book, was the minute I saw the podcast episode, was the minute I saw the t-shirt. The whole marketing plan was sort of written in front of my my yeah, eyes. Yeah. And so for me, that's how my brain works. It starts from my heart, moves to my head, moves into action. Mm. But just kind of being aware of who you are and how you function and just being honest from working from that place, like internal over external, yeah. is, is how I work. Um, but that's not everybody. Sure. Well, it's working well for you. So um, as we're closing out, You're one sweet. thing I'm really interested in, and I know a lot of our, our listeners are too, is how are you going out and booking your own shows oh, in your own tour? So there's a whole whole discussion in that. And we're going to do a deep dive into that if you guys sure. are cool to dive into your process there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people can find that at the show notes page on madeitmusic.com. So, awesome. Um, but as we're closing out, are you guys ready for the lightning round? Favorite city to tour? Winnipeg. Gotta say the hometown. I'm okay. with him. Winnipeg? <laughs> Great. Most interesting sound you've ever put on a record? Oh. I'm going to say it was like the combination of the pots and pans that you played on I Need You on Repeat with your bass guitar on that same song, not sounding anything like a bass guitar. That's right. There were all kinds of overtones. There was one time with Casey at the at the mansion in the hills when we were in like this long hallway that connects all the buildings. Picture Skyfall. And he had, that, yes, the totally. he had garbage bins and all kinds of things set up in the middle of the hall because it was like this <laughs> 10 by 120 foot hallway. Yeah. Lightning round, lightning round. Yes. That so was it was trash cans in the trash hallway. Cans, <laughs> trash cans and hallways. I love it. That should be the podcast. And trash cans and subtitle. hallways. Subtitle. Very it. small fish. <laughs> uh, first record that you guys ever got? Oh. That we ever owned? I don't know if it was the first. I just remember taking my entire CD collection to the to the like trade-in when those trade-in stores were a thing and buying The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Hmm. I was like, take these 20. All I want is that one. That is so much cooler than my answer. Oh, What's I, I doubt it. In God We Trust, Striper. Hey, that's Whatever. pretty cool. I like that. I mean, I own a Unitard. I don't know if you do. I love but... Striper. <laughs> okay. We we actually practiced next to them at Sound. Wow. Uh, you were completely unfocused. It was the worst rehearsal of all that's time. That's when you know you've made it. Sound check. Yeah. Practice next to Striper. That's <laughs> yes. your next t-shirt. Yes. I heard the guitar harmonies. <laughs> <laughs> guitar harmonies. That's amazing. Uh, this is a Chris question. Favorite guitar? Mm. Oh, Les Paul. I know, I'm, I know I'm a bass player, but the Les Paul is like, in my heart, it's my favorite sounding guitar. It's your go-to. Okay. Yeah. Fender um, P bass. If you, if it's and bass. Jody, to close out, yeah. favorite fan engagement platform, whether mm. something on social media or text or email or snail mail. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Uh, for right now, I think um, Instagram stories from my favorite. Last week we rehearsed and I just set up, actually going live on any platform I used to hate and loathe and really love now, mm. from loathing to loving. Um, Instagram live or Facebook live or YouTube? You know what? Any of them. Just I, I'm on Instagram the most because I just, I don't know why I love pictures and it seems to be the way I enjoy the most. But I put it up in our rehearsal room, which is also the playroom. And we just let people in on our rehearsal. Did a 45 minute rehearsal. And fans just loved it. Are you like answering questions while they're Yeah, in between as he's changing guitars and tuning. That's cool. He does all the hard work and I pretty much just talk to people and sing and like share my heart and try out new songs. Well, Honestly, that's like gone to me, are the that's days. Hard work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think people love seeing that because it's like you're gonna hear all the notes that are yeah. off and like the timing. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. Like when we tried yeah. out we literally make ourselves try new stuff and there's like stopping that yeah. was wrong, restarting. Some fans have given me advice on like, drop that word, add that word in. I'm like, cool. I'm not writing you into song credit, Thanks but that's a that. great idea. You know, I think I'm immune to all that because I grew up with a dad that had perfect pitch and be like, yeah, that that's not the right You're answer. Awesome. You yeah. do not want Thanks his dad that. in on your, on your he's rehearsal. Like, he's like in the, in, in the audience in a concert, like 200 people and it's like, I... Yeah, let's get the dog, the <laughs> dog whistle thing. But no, that's been a blast. <laughs> People will take their lunch break with us. And if we go live at around noon, that will just be all these awesome people all around the world tuning in. I, I do I do want to close it out, but just just uh, one question on that. Are you, how consistent are you with live? Is it a daily thing? Is it a No, month, it's not daily. Kind of thing? Honestly, um, I probably go live on Instagram when I'm doing my makeup every second day because it's something I'm already doing. So I just set up the phone beside me. Again, it's not, it's documenting, not creating. Sure. Um, but in terms of Facebook and starting on YouTube, it's actually only weekly. Um, when we go into cycle in May, I'm gearing up. I want to be doing it every day. It mm. needs to be every day, but I'm not there. Mm. 
I'm not there yet. So good. Well, I love the work ethic. Well, we are going to do our deep dive here off, uh, off the, not off the record. It'll technically be on the record, but people can get it at madeinmusic.com on the show notes page. Cool. Um, anything that you want to leave our audience with uh, where they can discover you guys, anything you want to point them to podcast, YouTube, your Instagram. It's all just called love and the outcome. So it's not too fancy. Everything except Twitter, which is at love and outcome. (laughs) <laughs> which is like the weirdest so thing to we, say we asked we asked them if they could change if we could use an ampersand instead and, and we're like so what's your advice change your name <laughs> so guys Thanks, in closing, not helpful. play Thanks, by Twitter. the rules of each platform Thanks, do Twitter. not try and fight the system yeah. it will not work <laughs> that's awesome well, well we'll link to every all of those places and especially the podcast sure people are listening to this right now on the show notes page that'd be great we'd but, love um, that Jody, Chris, thanks so much for being on the show today. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hey, what's up? Thanks for hanging out on this YouTube video with us. In case you didn't know, this is from the Made It in Music podcast season two. We have a ton of awesome guests that come on the show, all music business professionals to share their knowledge and experience with you. So if you want to subscribe to not miss any future episodes, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and you'll be notified about all of them. And in case you didn't know, we do a deep dive for every episode where we go really in depth on a certain topic from each podcast episode. So sign up right here to get free unlimited access to all of those deep dives from our podcast. And if you want to watch another Made It in Music podcast video, click here.